Hey everybody, this is the fourth here, and welcome to another episode of Tip Tuesday. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to use a loudness meter to match the loudness of different audio inputs. So there are a number of reasons that you might want to do this, and I'll talk about a few of those more towards the end of this video, uh, but for now I'm going to show you how to do it. So if you watched my mixing tutorial, you'll know I have a video where I talk about you know, the difference between loudness that you perceive, um, the peak level, and RMS. And basically what I said is that your peak, you know, the level that you see on the peak meters in your mixer, for example, that peaking level is not at all accurate for determining the loudness of a sound relative to other sounds uh, and you know, their peaking levels. Uh, now RMS is something that you see a lot. Uh, people will often say that RMS is better to actually compare the loudness of sounds, which is kind of true. You know, it's definitely a lot better than peak, but it's still not ideal because if you have a track that has a lot of bass, a lot of low frequency sounds, it's going to read pretty high on, on an RMS meter. And the truth is you don't hear bass as well as you hear higher frequencies. So, you know, if you have, if you're comparing a sound with a lot of bass compared to a sound with no bass, the bassy sound might read higher on an RMS meter than the non-bassy sound, even though what you hear is that the non-bassy sound actually sounds louder to you. So, you know, that's why RMS is not the best. Uh, and what I do recommend instead of peak and instead of RMS is to use loudness units or LU. So in this video, I'm going to be using a free loudness meter. Um, I'll, I'll try to put a link in the description if I can find it again, but it's the Audiocation loudness meter. And it measures your loudness using loudness units, which do take into account the frequency sensitivity of your ears. So, you know, the problem that I mentioned before about the bass, you know, a sound that has too much bass, it will read as more accurate um, to how you actually perceive it rather than just the pure RMS power behind the sound. So using this, um, I want to loudness match the drops of a couple different versions of the same track. Uh, one is mastered and the other is not. Um, I had three there, but I'm only going to do two for the sake of time. Um, and so the, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to find the drop and I'm going to loop the drop. So there's different ways that you can do this. Uh, you can either play through the whole track or you can just loop one section. Um, and I, I kind of prefer to loop one section because I just feel like it gives me the best match in loudness um, for that section, which is kind of what I'm usually most interested in. And the reason I like to do this is because, you know, uh, you might have a lot more dynamic range throughout your track uh, before it's mastered, if you're comparing it to a mastered track. And, um, you know, the kind of the main thing that you're probably going to be comparing is how the main sections of your track sounds. So for this example, I'm going to just um, you know, loop one section of the drop, kind of the biggest section, and then I'm going to obtain my loudness reading from that. But you know, I definitely encourage you to try it out both ways. Try playing through the full song, try uh, just looping one section, and see what works best for you. Uh, this is just how I prefer to do it. So the next thing I need to do is kind of get this set up a bit. Um, so I want to change the scale to LUFS, which means loudness units full scale. And then I want to set the time to int, I-N-T, which means integrated. Um, so instead of momentary or short term, uh, this is integrated. It reads the loudness uh, over a period of time and kind of gives you one reading for the overall loudness throughout that period of time. And then I'm going to reset it and start it and then I'm going to play um, I've soloed one of these tracks so I'm going to play it
And so you kind of want to play it long enough so that it um, starts to even out. You know, if it's changing up and down by 0.1, uh, that's not a big deal. That's pretty much accurate. So it looks like it read this as minus 18.7. So I'm going to write that down just so I don't forget it. And then I'm going to read the loudness of the other one. So I'm going to solo this, um, hit stop on this, reset, start, and then uh, just do the same thing that I just did. And um, I'm actually going to reduce the level of that one um, because I, I just tried it and it was over the loudness. So I'm going to put it down quite a bit and that might be better. Um, so a, a little tip, try to get the levels kind of close before starting this just to avoid any problems like this. So I'm going to try that again, hit reset, start, and play it. Okay, and so this one is minus 15.8, which means it's a little bit louder than the other one. Um, actually, that's a decent bit louder, but uh, so my difference between these is, um, you know, it's minus 18.7 versus minus 15.8. And so what I want to do is I want to reduce the louder one by 2.9 LU, and then you know, instead of being minus 15.8, this one will be minus 18.7 as well. Um, and the nice thing about LUFS is that they match very well with the decibel. Uh, so all I have to do is go in and find the correct mixer track. And then I just want to reduce it uh, by 2.9. And that's 2.9 right there. And now we should hear that these are about the same loudness. So I'm going to kind of switch between them. Um, they are going to sound a bit different because this one's mastered and this one's not. But in terms of loudness, they should sound uh, about the same. And so I think that definitely sounds very, very close to the same, if not the same. Um, but just to double check, I might stop, reset it, and start it again, and then play through this and see if it reads out at about minus 18.7. So you can see, um, you know, it was kind of changing between minus 18.6, 7, and 8 at the end there. Um, and that's exactly what was originally read for this one, which I didn't make any changes to. So, you know, they are pretty much the same loudness. So yeah, that's how you can use, you know, a loudness meter to match the loudness of a few different audio sources. Um, and, you know, just the way you want to do it is find the difference in LU and then uh, use your mixer faders and adjust by the same amount in decibels that the difference is to uh, get them to sound about the same loudness. And as you can hear, I'll play it once more. You can see that they sound yeah, pretty much the same loudness. Uh, there are some differences, like I said, because this is mastered, this isn't. Uh, but in terms of loudness, pretty much about the same. And so why would you want to do this? You know, why would you want to be this accurate with matching the loudness of different uh, audio sources? And, you know, there are a few different reasons. Um, one is 
with mastering um, and mixing too, anytime that you're using a reference track, you, know, you want to make sure that you're referencing at the same loudness. Um, so if, if you've gone on and you've been mixing a track using reference mixing, you, know, you should be about the same loudness, but maybe you know after setting your drum sounds, kind of you've been setting your other sounds a little bit too quiet, then your track might um, be a bit quieter. You know, it might sound a bit quieter than the reference track. And you know, because of this, it might not sound quite as good as the reference track uh, because you know, louder sounds have the illusion of sounding better. So if you're partway through mixing and you feel like things aren't sounding quite right, they're not sounding quite as good as the reference track, uh, you can try out you know, reading the loudness of the reference track and comparing it to the loudness of your mix down and see if there's a difference in loudness there. Because you know that difference in loudness, if there is a difference, it could trick you into thinking that your track either sounds better or worse than the reference track, uh, just because of a difference in loudness. And so mastering, kind of the same thing before you do any EQing, stereo, widening, compression, any of that stuff, you want to kind of match the reference track you're using, if you're using a reference track, with the uh, you know, audio that you're mastering. So that way you can get the EQ just right, um, you know, balance the levels perfectly, uh, get the stereo um, sounding good. Because again, if there's a difference in the loudness of your track and the reference track, then you know it might trick you into thinking um, either your master sounds good as it is, or that your master doesn't sound good when it actually does sound good. So you know maybe your bass is too loud, but you don't hear that because your track is quieter than the reference. Like overall, your track is quieter, but the bass is about the same. Then overall, you know, in relation to your track, your bass is probably a bit loud since everything else is a bit quiet, um, and and anything like that. Uh, you can also kind of do it to see the peak difference between a mixed and a master track. Um, so I've already loudness matched these, and I can look on the, uh, you know, the peak meters and see where I'm peaking. So with this track, I'm peaking at about um, minus three. Uh, but the mastered version I'm peaking at maybe about minus 11. So, you know, if you're going for that loudness and you want to achieve a certain loudness, you can see, okay, so I need to take my peaks right now from minus three all the way down to minus 11. Um, so that's a use. Um, and another thing that I use it for is whenever I go to reference my track in other, um, on other speakers or other sound systems. Um, so basically, I'll take a few tracks that I like to use as references, you know, a few tracks that I think are really well mixed, and you know, I'll have my mixed track, uh, an export of my mixed track, and I'll read the loudness of my mixed track, and then I will read the loudness of the reference tracks, and kind of match them so that they're the same loudness as my, uh, you know, the track that I'm checking the mix of. And then I'll, I'll save all those audio files separately, put them on my phone or whatever, um, so that I can easily you know, go into my car, um, go to a friend's car, or just listen to my track on different speakers and compare it to other tracks without having to worry about the difference in loudness. You know, so I know any you know, differences between my mix and the other tracks is caused by my mix, not um, a difference in loudness. So if my track doesn't quite sound as good, you know, then there's something that maybe I need to change. And it, it's a lot easier to tell. You know, personally, I mix in headphones, so it's kind of hard to get the bass right. Um, and so this helps me because I know if my bass sounds way louder than it does in the other tracks, I need to you know, cut, cut back on that bass a bit. It, it's also a nice way, if you're looking to get a track professionally mastered, it's a nice way to actually see the quality of the master that um, you know they're putting out, because like so many demos, <laughs> so many uh, demos that you hear of mastered versus unmastered tracks by these studios, um, you know they don't level match them. So the mastered version is just way way louder, like way way louder than the before version. Um, so in this case, you know you saw the peak difference, and it's really hard to accurately compare 
the quality of the master if you have that huge difference in loudness. So, you know, if, if you have the chance to download some of the samples that they have available and then level match them, you can make sure that, you know, they're putting out a good quality. So in this example, you know, here's my mix down. So that would be the before. And here's the master, which would be the after. And, you know, because there's not that huge difference in loudness, it's just a lot easier to compare the quality. Uh, the improvements that were actually made during the master, um, either, you know, applying proper compression or maybe widening or reducing the stereo um, and you know, balancing the frequencies. So yeah, that's how you can use um, a loudness meter to match the loudness of a few different audios and also, you know, a few different reasons uh, for why you would want to do that. But, you know, hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully you get some use out of that. And I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you thought it was helpful, please be sure to leave a like and maybe a comment if you have any questions or requests for future videos. If you're new to the channel, I encourage you to subscribe and have a look around. I've already uploaded a bunch of tutorials, and I try to release new ones every week. I also do my best to keep things pretty organized so that you can find what you're looking for a bit more easily. So thanks again guys for watching the video, and hopefully I'll see you next time.